So you want to learn the Affinity Suite, but you don't know where to start. Cool, well, this video's for you. Here's everything you need to know to get started in Affinity Suite in just 10 minutes. The Affinity Suite is made up of three apps. We have Designer, Publisher, and Photo. Affinity Designer is your illustration and design workstation. Affinity Publisher is your page and layout powerhouse. And Affinity Photo is your photo manipulation and photo editor. These three apps make up the Affinity Suite and you can buy them separately or all together. Now Affinity is slightly different because these are three apps, but they all work as one. Here's a post that I created in Affinity Publisher. I say Publisher, but I've actually been able to use all three Affinity apps directly inside of Publisher using the Studio Link feature. And because I own all three Affinity apps, both the Designer and Photo Personas are now available to me at the same time as Publisher. Over here that I'm on is Affinity Publisher. This means that I've got all my text boxes, I've got my shapes, my framing devices. But when I go ahead and press Affinity Designer Persona, you'll notice it doesn't open a new app. It actually keeps us in the same design. However, everything, all the tools has changed. We have a different toolbar at the top, but we still have our layers over here and we have all the vector tools that we need. Now, what is a vector? Vector is an infinitely scalable shape. Here, I've got a vector shape here, and I can zoom in, and you notice how sharp it stays. But if I scroll down here and see this mountain, this is not a vector, because if we infinitely scroll in, you'll start to see pixels. And in Affinity Designer, we can create cool vector shapes, logos, and illustrations. Okay, so let's look at the whole workstation. Up here on the top, we have our personas. We have our text wrapping options up here. We have our preview mode. This allows us to see grids that we try and create. And here's a little tip. To go and create your grids, go to view, down to guides, and you'll get this guide box that pops up. You can change the gutter values, the margins, and everything in manually, or at any point, you could go back and adjust the values using these sliders too, which makes creating grids a breeze. Preview mode allows us to see our guides. Over here, we have our baseline grid. Next to this, we have snapping. Now, snapping is your smart guides. Snapping is like having a magnet for your shapes. If I try and duplicate this shape without snapping on, it will just kind of float around and it'll be very hard to line it up exactly. If I turn snapping on, just like a magnet, it will snap into place in a perfect position. In the snapping area, we can actually change the preset. And there's a lot here, but don't worry, just go to one of the presets here and depending on what you're working on, choose a snapping preset that works for you. Over here, we have the arrange function where we can move shapes, move text to the back. Over here, we have our alignment functions where if we wanted to have two shapes that align, so let's create a shape here and let's create a shape here. If we want them to be centered aligned, select two of these, go to alignment, and let's align them like so. Then we have our transform function. If we wanna flip our shape, we can either flip it like so by pressing these. Over here on the left, we have our selection tool, direct selection tool, and we have frame text tool as well. This is where you'll be grabbing all of your tools that you'll commonly use in your Affinity apps. The cool thing in Publisher, if we wanted to bring text out into a text box, we go to this text box tool. It's called the frame text tool, and we can slide out like so, insert filler text and it will insert it into that text box and we can mess around with it like so. We can press this as well to increase this and to add on the text. But if you wanted to draw out a title, then just click the artistic text tool. This allows you to click and drag and this will change the size of the lettering that you're drawing on really easily. Over on the right, we have some of our floating windows. This is like layers and your layers will always be here. The great thing about Publisher is that it keeps your layers in a normal logical order that you would find in other apps. The layers panel is really powerful and you can drag it out and move it if you want to as well. Above that, we have our color panels and swatches. Just click on one of the swatches to change the colors or go up to the recently used swatches and click those. And next to that, we have our stroke values where we can increase the stroke and change all the settings there. To hide a layer, we just press this button here. To lock a layer, we press this button up here to lock it. Everything works really well. To work out what a layer is, look at the icons on the left. This will tell you it's a text layer. This will tell you that it's a frame text area. This will tell you that it's an artistic text area. 
If you look over here, this will tell you that there's a group. And within this group, you can see there are shapes. This is a vector shape layer. Now let's move to Affinity Designer. This is where we can design logos and illustrations. When we click over to Designer, you'll notice that a lot of things change, but it looks very similar. We still have our layer panel in the same spot. We still have our swatches in the same spot. We have some of the same tools up here. The biggest change is over here on the left and the tools that we have. Here we have an artboard tool, but we can't use that when we have a multiple pages or a master page. We have a direct selection or no tool. And something that I really like is the contour tool. This will allow you to offset with a live preview, which is something you will often notice throughout all the Affinity apps. We also have a corner tool in Affinity Designer, which is great because when we click it and we select an area, like so, you'll notice a circle that appears, but this is actually rounding that shape, as you can see. Now, depending on what you've clicked on, it will change the contextual menu at the top. So if I click off, there's nothing there. But when I select this shape and I go into the direct selection tool here, you'll notice that everything changes. We have a fill value, we have a stroke, we have absolute sizes, we even have corner radiuses that we can change. We can change the corner like so in live preview mode. And we have something called convert to curves. This will take it from a live shape, like a square primitive like you see here, to just a normal bezier path. Down here we have our pen tool. Now my anchor points and handles are really large and that's because I've gone into the settings, which if you click off, go to settings, you will be met with a lot here. If I go down to tools, I can make my tool handle size larger. And I also use scrubby zoom and I press select object when it intersects with selection marquee. Now that's a lot of fancy words that basically mean when I now select a shape or object, if any part of my selection interacts or overlaps the shape, it now selects it. The pencil tool allows you to draw just naturally with a mouse if you're a degenerate or with the graphics tablet or on the iPad. One of the cool things about the Affinity Suite is that you get all of these apps on the iPad as well. They're native and that works super well. And all the apps share the same file saving format, which is great. So you can work on the computer, on the Mac, and then bring it to the iPad and vice versa. And the apps are almost identical to the desktop apps in terms of features and tools, which is pretty amazing. Next, we have our flood fill, which allows you to fill in closed shapes easily with color. Another great tool that we have in the designer persona is the shape builder tool. This allows us to cut shapes out. So if we were to take this shape and duplicate it by holding command and shift, so it stays, select both of the shapes, go to the shape builder tool, and then either select minus or plus to remove a part of a shape or add to a part of a shape. And that allows you to create cool shapes. Now let's go to Affinity Photo Persona. When we click on Photo Persona, you'll notice that we have a few different text boxes, but everything looks very similar again. We have our work in the middle, we have our layers on the right, but we have a few more items on the left and the right. For instance, now we have channels next to our layers here. We also have brushes here, and these brushes allow us to draw and we can edit them. All of our layers have stayed the same because the app works as one. So starting from the top, we have some enhancement tools, and these are auto contrast at levels and balance. Here we have our selection tools. So we can select everything if we want, we can deselect, or we can invert a selection. We also have a quick mask tool where we can quickly mask out something. Over here we have our snapping again, we can force pixel alignment, and we have some of the same things that we've been talking about over here. On the left hand side, we have a color picker. We have our crop tool, which allows us to crop all of this if we wanted to. We also have a really cool brush selector, which will allow us to brush things in. And this is a really fast way of doing it. The great thing about the Affinity Suite is having the masks and adjustments down here at the bottom of our layer panel. So here we can use masks. Here we've got adjustments and we have live filters. In real time, you can see the radial blur change as I scroll this slider up and down. Wild. And because Affinity doesn't require you to convert layers into smart objects like in other apps, this allows you to save time by just accessing your adjustments with ease or by scaling your objects at any point non-destructively. And that adjustment doesn't happen or bake into the image. It's actually as a layer on top. Now, if we're looking for blend modes, then we can change our blend modes and create some cool textures like I've done with the paper background here. 
All I do is I bring in a paper texture that I found on Unsplash. And then I press this button here. And this brings the blending options in. And I can drag these down and mess around with them very quickly. I can zoom in whilst it's happening live and get a real good look in real time what's happening. Then I can lock that layer and it's created a nice texture on top. Now, if you're wanting to create some cool effects for your text, then you can go ahead and press this effects button and this will give you all of your layer effects in one box and you can add multiple effects of the same effect straight on top, which is pretty neat. Affinity Suite is feature rich, but it's actually easier than you think to use. Everything is live and non-destructive and they've always got a trial happening. So if you want a trial affinity completely risk-free, no payment details required, click the link down below. And even better, they have no subscription. It is a one-time purchase of all the apps or a singular app. If you wanted to just have Affinity Designer or Affinity Publisher, you can buy just a singular app if you want. If you want this workflow though, you get the whole suite and you'll have every app at your disposal when designing. If you enjoyed this video, subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.